allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anyone who wishes to record or photograph this meeting must first notify the chair, who will then inform the public uh, under the Massachusetts Open Meeting Law, July 210. Such audio or video recording may not interfere with this meeting. We did have um, Ms. Kelly of Blank Reese. She mentioned she'd be coming, but I have, she hasn't arrived. Push that aside for now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, the next item is going to be the election of officers. Um, so, I'll be stepping aside. <laughs> Smiles. <Yeah. laughs> Not a favorable vote by the committee. Right? <laughs> um, but I, I just wanted to say, um, you know, as always, it's, it's always awesome to work with. I just feel so good when I step into this building and the building's so beautiful and, and the, the staff that's here is so committed. Um, they do such a good job. I don't think that people realize kind of behind the scenes all the, the preparation for these many items from the superintendent's team. Um, it's not just about the superintendent, it's the team. That's right. And the school committee members have been so supportive and so patient with me. Um, I really do appreciate that. Um, it's been a, a great experience, but I'm okay to just be on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, would you like to bring the motion for it? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we need um, make, make a motion that we. Uh, nominated Mr. Michael Watson as Chairman Pro Tem. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> we'll need a motion for a new chairperson, too. I'll make a motion for uh, the chair for this coming year, Kimberly Bancourt from New Bedford. Second. I'll just tell you. All in favor? Aye. 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 The vice chair, please. Make a motion for the vice chair. Make a motion that uh, Mr. Wayne Oliveira be appointed as vice chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 If it's easier, Kim. I was going to say, Wayne can just sit here. Yeah, we yeah. can slide that down for this month anyway. Yeah, we can. Okay. Here you go. She's moving. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. 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 Oh, buddy. Oh. Yeah. 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 Well, not this. This is great. Well, thank you, everybody. It'll be exciting. I think Wayne and I will make a good um, so. chair and vice chair this year. So. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. All right, we're going to continue on with the agenda. Uh, reading and acceptance of minutes of the April 11th and April 26th. Madam Chair, we have to appoint Mr. Watson as secretary. secretary. Oh, I thought we did that already. No. I don't know what I got appointed to, but I, yeah. I, I'll, you can, I'll take this one, too. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that's what we did. So, um, we do need a vote to appoint Michael Watson as Secretary of the Regional District Committee, effective July 1, 2023, through okay. June 30th, 2024. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Acceptance of minutes from April 11th and April 26th, 2023 meetings. Um, everyone should have a copy of the minutes. Any questions on those? Make a motion we accept. 
Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, to report. Yeah, do you want uh, approval of bills? Including everybody's materials, you should have a copy of the warrant. Any questions on that? Uh, no, I'll put a motion on the table so we can discuss it if needed, but motion to approve the um, report, the bills. Second? Second the motion to uh, pay the bills on the warrant. All right, and discussion? Anybody have any questions or anything on the? Right. <coughs> we'll move on to the superintendent uh, shout outs. Thank you, Mr. Bencourt. Uh, so, you know, in honor of uh, National Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, I just want to take an opportunity to really uh, pass on what I wrote in my weekly address uh, this week is to thank really all of our educators uh, for their work with kids in our building day in and day out. Those that haven't been here, the, the work of a teacher has changed considerably in a post-pandemic world, not only dealing with things like learning loss um, and different obstacles that have been presented in the lives of our young people, but also in delivery systems for instruction and finding ways to meet the needs uh, of the learners in 2023. And so on behalf of the administration and the committee uh, this week, this month, um, I want to make special recognition to all of our teachers and thank them for their hard work each and every day on behalf of our kids. Great. Thank you. Um, with the committee's approval, I'd like to loop back to public comment. I know the um, Mrs. Reese had wanted to speak tonight. Yes, so. Make a motion we raise the rules and go back to public comment. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, myself and my wife, my name is Carlos Reese, and my wife Kelly LeBlanc Reese, uh, we are the parents of a junior uh, in the cosmetology shop. This class has always had uh, behavior issues uh, since the uh, freshman year. Currently this year, Mrs. Ross and Miss H have been doing nothing but an awesome job in trying to teach and deal with the behaviors. They've been doing their best to cover what was lost due to COVID. There have been a few issues and administration has decided to close the salon. We feel that the whole class should not be punished for the few students who make bad, bad choices or bad decisions. <clears throat> we have contacted the school administration numerous times about the behaviors and it continues on getting worse. We understand that the way they treat each other and the way they treat the teacher is uncalled for. The students in our daughter's class who are not adhering the core values need to be held accountable for their actions. The other students who are following the core values and are conducting themselves appropriately should not be punished for learning by the salon not being open to the public. Working on a mannequin is very different than working on a real person. The importance of interaction between the stylist and the customer is crucial as it is how their the trust, integrity, and confidence in the necessary social skills are improved upon. Myself and my wife are previous alumni from this very school and feel that this is a bad decision on punishing the good students. If this is the standard that this school is going to follow, then how will these students of all grades and shops learn properly? What will be the next step of the school will decide to do? Will it be to reduce or even eliminate co-op? This is a vocational school for hands-on learning, not just school book work. As it is important to put the hands on, it is just as much. The many good students should not be punished for the few. Yes, you will get phone calls from the parents of the students that will not participate due to their behaviors. That is when there are the core values that the school adheres to should be further communicated to them and let those parents hold those students accountable. Thank you. to item C, parent communications, Superintendent Watson. So included in your packet are the most recent POSIP uh, 
family reports that have come from uh, grades 9, 10, 11, and 12 over the last several weeks. Uh, the district continues to implement the biweekly POSIP feedback from parents, and the Family Engagement Center is returning all calls uh, to which names and numbers are given by parents to, to get their feedback addressed by the appropriate departments. Okay, uh, continuing on, Superintendent Watson, weekly updates. In your packet, include all of the weekly newsletters uh, that are disseminated to all staff on Monday. Um, most recently, the May 1st weekly. Um, Principal Williams for the RC report. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd be happy to go over our RC report for May 2023. We're going to be talking about a number of our departments throughout the school. First, I'll talk about our English department. The English department has, uh, they're continuing the work on their anti racism workshop with Dr. Matthew Henry, who uh, came to us on March 3rd and gave a great great training for the staff, and uh, part two of that will be upcoming. You'll see once we have our slides up, we have uh, Dr. Henry at the helm of the class working with some of our teachers. Um, you see our ELA teachers, you also see Ms. Yolanda Dennis in there as well. I was in there also. It was, it was a great workshop for our staff as we move to the next step in bringing our literature to the next level for our literature reflecting the students that are in this building. So it's great work, much necessary, much needed. Attendance. I'd like to talk about attendance and the great achievements there. Um, we, our students, are currently maintaining a 96 overall, 96 percent overall average uh, or rate for being attendant. That's a great average, especially in the as things warm up. Our kids are still showing up to school, and you'll see on the next slide that month over month, when you compare last year to this year, we continue to do better than we did last year. So post COVID is working out for us as we get kids feeling comfortable coming to school each and every day. Um, and I, I'm hoping that the same will be the case in May and June when the month, when it gets warmer. So we have to keep that and keep that in the front of our minds as we celebrate our kids being here every day. But if we look to the next slide, uh, you see that our freshmen are doing a great job. Class of 2026, 81 students had perfect attendance. 63 of our sophomores had perfect attendance. 42 of our juniors and then 48 of our seniors had Perfect attendance, so that's really great work. Pretty surprising that our seniors bested our juniors. It's usually not that way. So, well, kudos to the freshmen, and we hope that they maintain that sort of momentum as the years progress. But that's a normal progression across grades. Um, we'll talk about the guidance department. So, the guidance department went on two college campus tours: Framingham State and Bridgewater State University, uh, where students, uh, where they took over 60 students, and they were able to ask questions see the campuses and I remember when they came back one afternoon a lot of them had bought you know Bridgewater State University sweaters and they were showing them off and really excited about the experience that they had so it's great experiences for our students who otherwise may not go off to those campuses before they start deciding what campuses they want to go to next slide uh, we had guidance counselors that attended a MASCA or Massachusetts School Counselors Association training two counselors did, did attend that conference if you will uh, where they learn certain topics such as special education support at the college level, safe school initiatives, and alternative pathways for vocational technical students. Um, our business technology program, as many of you may know, it is a two-year program and not a four-year. And so at the moment, our business tech program is looking for students that may want to attend that program. So it's holding after school sessions for students that are interested in it is a more popular shop than people realize it is becoming more and more popular as the years progress. I think the teachers in there are doing great. The curriculum is solid and the den is just always a great place, a place where kids want to work and build up those skills. So um, right now we are building up that program as we do filling the, the slots with juniors, incoming juniors. Special ed service. Well, well, can I just ask a quick question? Um, what is the prerequisite for students to get into that business technology program? Like, what shops would they come from? So it, they're coming from all, all sorts of shops. Okay. Some students, you know, they may have been, they may have gotten their first pick, but they may have grown out of enjoying that first pick or third pick or fourth pick. And so um, business tech becomes that option for them if they feel like they want to go in another direction. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much one of our, one of our only options um, that is a two-year shop at the moment kids can go into it so uh, at one point we were basing it on student based on criteria mm -hmm. and at this point we are going first come first serve that actually want to be in there Great. So, you're welcome 
the Special Services Department. We have here illustrated, we have uh, Ms. Bates, Ms. Farias, and Ms. Parker. I'm really happy about the work that they are doing. I know uh, Ms. Szynski, Aaron Szynski, the director of this department, has put a lot of work into building up, having programming in our CBT areas for student supports, and that's something that has been devoid in the CBT area for years. And uh, this trio has been going into related classes and in shops to support teachers around building up their curriculum and you know modifying lessons so that way students who, who are on educational plans can access curriculum. So that is to me groundbreaking. It's something that probably not every school is doing on the CBTE side, but we are, and I'm, I'm grateful that we are, and that group is doing a magnificent job. And I know that our CTE teachers are begging for more. So great work on their part. Co-op. So we talked about co-op. Uh, I believe a couple months ago, and we saw that there were fewer than 281 students who were out, and now we see there are 281, almost 300 kids out on co-op. Um, that's, a, that's a huge number, and we take a look at that number. It was just about a million dollars last time we spoke, and now it's at 1.3 million that our students have, have made out in the field. So that's amazing. I'm proud of these kids and proud of the work that our director of co-op is doing. I, don't, I want to interrupt because I, I don't think that we can underscore this enough. Right. So when Henry came on board last August, he sat in my office um, and I told him the, the goal was a 10% increase. There were 188 kids on co-op last year. The goal was 210. See a 10% increase. We are at 281. Prior to last year, we had never been higher than 140 for the previous decade. So take the last year off the table. That is twice as many kids are in cooperative education placements today <coughs> than had ever been in any preceding year during the prior decade. So I, I don't want to miss that moment to, to really celebrate. I know we've been talking about this a lot, but this is one of our charges, is to get kids into cooperative education placements. And this isn't just like a little bit better. Right? This is substantially better than what we've been able to do at any point in more than the last decade. And so I want to make sure that point connects with, with folks on the committee too. Thank you, Mr. Williams. You're welcome. And he's, you know, Henry's definitely setting the bar very high for himself for next year's goals. Uh, I don't know if can't wait for that. Can't wait for that August conversation. It may not be, but further that I go, before you know it, I'll have the whole senior. Kids. <laughs> it's amazing work. It, it can't be uh, stated. And so we'll see some of our kids in action on the next slide. This is this is uh, Hugh Nugent, who is an awesome kid. Great kid, all over the so much school spirit. But you see that he's working on a Rolls-Royce V16 engine um, yacht, which he talks about all the time every time I see him. And so he's, again, he's out there alongside skilled craftspeople doing this work. And also this is, like I say all the time, this is not a Mickey Mouse operation. These kids are learning incredible skills. If you look at the next slide, same thing. We have Raphael Andre. I actually was lucky enough to be out in the field with um, Henry when we went to go visit Raphael at DW White in a Kushnet. And he was, I asked him to show me what he's doing. You wouldn't believe what he's doing. He's literally doing the takeoff for the for projects that they're doing. And they do huge projects throughout the state and in Rhode Island and in New Hampshire. And he and Raphael's involved in that. So just to really illustrate the incredible work that our kids are doing, it's it's monumental. And I'm proud of Raphael. We have Julian Algorin from HVAC who's doing refrigeration work at Truckee's just down the street. Um, you can see that he's, he's doing that work there. So again, just a, another testament to the co-op program and getting kids out there getting live work under their belt. And we'd be remiss if we didn't recognize our 15-year veteran, our placement facilitator, Marcy Latender, uh, who's retiring this year. Um, she does yeoman's work each morning, getting our students off and on the buses checking our placement sites, making sure that our placement sites are safe, the kids have all their paperwork in, that our um, relationships with our placements are solid and that the relationships are good. And more than 100 students per year on placement, and, and she's really tackled that charge. And she's really happy to go off and enjoy her retirement with her husband, Ernie. And I know that Henry will be, you know, sorely missing her presence in that department. So, you know, we will miss Marcy at the end of this school year. We'll move on to Academy C, our customer service and transportation. We'll talk about automotive first. So the freshmen in our shop are <laughs> learning to change oil and, and tires and pulling brake systems apart. The freshmen are working on a 1993 Toyota Supra. They're taking that Supra apart, soup to nuts, 
thousands of parts are being dismantled and they're going to put that back together. If you look at the next slide, you'll see the students that are working on that. Um, and, and there's the super there that they're, you see all the parts that are under the hood there that they have to, that they put together. So they're doing great work and those are our youngsters, our freshmen doing that. We've got Riley, Ella, and uh, Giuliano. So business tech, let's talk a little bit about the business tech shop. Students participated in the 10th annual JA Titan Business Challenge. I can remember seeing our students, uh, this business challenge was at UMass Dartmouth. I remember them boarding the buses out front, how excited they were, all dapper in their suits and dresses, ready to compete against many other schools. If we look to the next slide, you'll see them in action at UMass Dartmouth in their library, looking ever so dapper. Um, those were our students. They competed. They didn't do so well, but it was sort of a Jeopardy-like competition about business. And, um, but they did do good and they were excited about it. And so uh, happy for them and, and that experience that they got with other schools, but also with the business, business technology um, field. And so in business technology, we have many students that participate in the Business Professionals of America. As you know, many of our students went off to compete at the national level in Anaheim, California. And so we had Ethan Medeiros, Brianna Gomes, and Josh Gomes who advanced to compete there. And they did well. Caden Mello and Julian Corrella won the awards at the state level. Um, and, you know, as always, you know, our students take pride in the work that they do with Business Professionals of America. And so if we look at the next slide, in the Business Tech Shop, hopefully you're all dropping by the den every now and then to keep up with the apparel that we have, but the juniors will be working on um, updating and preparing for apparel for next school year um, and ensuring that that den is up to industry standards, staying up to snuff. Students in Business Tech continue to earn Microsoft certification credentials throughout their senior year. We'll move on to Collision Technology. Next slide. The freshmen in Collision Tech, they've been trained in safety protocols using utilizing tools and equipment, and they're concentrating concentrating currently on car detailing. Um, those are 30 bucks, and they are worth it because it's a soup to nuts detail. So make sure you get your slip in to Mr. Shepard for a detail because I know it's shutting down probably sometime next month. 10th graders, they're training in the ICAR welding program. Again, another great skill for our kids to have um, and where they'll be getting certified. Our juniors are working on staff and community vehicles. Our seniors are also doing the same. However, almost 50% of them are out on co-op, adding to that number we just saw on the previous slide. Cosmetology. Cosmetology students, here we see our seniors, cosmetology seniors who have been able to acquire skills and, and they've been putting them to practice. They have passed their state exams, which is always awesome. Next slide, we see that our juniors and seniors participated in treating our medical, our medical students in manicures and therapeutic paraffin bits, which I've had before, and they're pretty awesome. Um, and so you're right, the LeBlanc family, I can't wait till we soon reopen the salon so that way we can all participate in that, and that will, that's soon to come. <clears throat> Junior class bridal project was a really awesome project that the, that the students participated in. They, they had the opportunity to showcase their creativity, working in teams to create cohesive looks. Uh, and just behind the, two, the three students that are in, in the illustration here, you'll see that they had some Gothic Garden in Brighton themes that they were working on in, in cosmetology. And really awesome, on the next slide, you'll see that we had students working down at the Zyterian. They, had, they just had a show called The Wiz, if you remember The Wiz with Michael Jackson back in the day. Uh, they had The Wiz at the Zyterian, and our students of cosmetology got to assist in the makeup of the characters that were in that play. Uh, so Emma Stewart and Alani Cepeda were there to help. And Lori Gomes, who you see in the bottom right, our right, you know, she's a luminary in the city for, you know, being a salon owner and, and, and all of that. And so... Our students are lucky to have been in her presence and also at the Zyterian at that production. Just another testament to the great things our kids do outside of these walls because of the preparation of what we do in these walls. So our freshmen and sophomores, they were visited by one of our 2017 alumni, uh, Brianna Machado, where she presented an inspirational ed in an educational demo. Um, and she demonstrated um, how to create classic and retro styles for Hollywood waves uh, in addition to many other things. So it was great to have her on campus. Our diesel tech shop, again, there's Hugh there in, the, in, that, uh, in, that, in that yacht that he loves to be working on, and there's the Hinkley Yachts just below where he's been working. So in diesel, the freshmen are settled into the shop, and they're learning skills to move on to the next grade. The upper class continue to work on outside private commercial trucks, as well as the New Bedford 
public facilities fleet. We'll move on to the information tech shop. Many of our students in the information technology shop participated in the BPA National, or the Business Professionals of America National Leadership Conference that I alluded to earlier in Anaheim, California, which was, which was an awesome experience. Um, as you can see, our student representative on our school committee came in second place. And introduced skills, and because he's such a high achiever, he beats himself up. That was that's second in the nation, just so we are clear on that. So I know he won it first, but second in the nation is, is nothing to blush at. He did a great job. And also, uh, youngster Toby Sinar came in second place for Linux Operating Systems Fundamentals. So another great young man. So, you know, information tech bringing home second place, two students, that's something to really tip our hats at. Just great work on their part. And there's the whole crew there at, at BPA. We see uh, our dapper representative there off to the right, our right. <laughs> ha! It's ha. Hot. All right. I see no beads of sweat there. You did all right. <laughs> good. All right, so there's marine technology. We have some of our younger, youngsters right in the south end of New Bedford on one of the boats. Uh, freshmen, they've been practicing on the water skills with, at the community boating center down in the south end of New Bedford. They've been learning how to dock, lead the dock, mooring, holding fast, spring lines, dock lines, and reversing avoidance drills. So they've been staying very busy in there. The weather hasn't been so hot, but hasn't been so good on the water, but nonetheless, they've been persistent in getting out on the water. The Marine Technology Juniors are wrapping up their placement rotations, which have been at East Coast Interiors, Burr Brothers Boats in Marion, and then Rick's Outboard Marine. Uh, we had Jordan Mello, Jacob Ramos, and Braden Duart, at those three respectively. And so Marine Tech, again, uh, we'll talk about Skills USA. We had a huge in that shop, we had a huge representation of our, of our marine technology students at, at the State Skills USA Conference. Jordan Mello, Alex Pellegrino, um, Braden Duar, Jacob Ramos, Aiden Williams, Noah Andrade, and Peter Goldra were all up there. And you'll see Mike McConnell down there at the bottom. He's really a huge supporter of our Skills USA and also is an advisor, um, a chapter advisor here. And Jordan Mello, you should have seen it. I was up there on, on Saturday when he was represented and elected as state officer this year. It is such a huge thing that they do up there. It, was, it is mesmerizing. I always say if, if you should try to get up there and see it because it's amazing what they do. Um, so. And well, that, that wraps it all up. I thought I had more. But uh, again, I just want to mention there's so much more that we do here at Radio Bedford Vogue Tech. That's just a small sampling. Of it, and I just want to conclude. I know I talk a lot about Skills USA because it's a place where kids, it's a place where kids get to showcase their skills and talent. And because of how invested Greater New Bedford Book Tech is in Skills USA, we have just recently been awarded the recognition of, of out of 24 schools across the entire nation, the models of excellence. Actually, the pin I'm wearing right now just came from came from. The, the National Skills USA we've been awarded. And so when we go down, the seven our students go down to Atlanta to compete against the rest of the nation, our school, along with the 24 other schools, will be doing some other activities to be recognized for our models of excellence. So kudos to the four advisors, the chapter advisors, kudos to the many advisors that we have that are teachers working with our kids on the front lines, and to our kids who have medaled or who have just participated, because it's a huge, piece of our school, our vocational school. And with that, I yield back and thank you. Yes, so I'm not sure if I should direct it to the superintendent or to uh, the principal, but does BCC do a presentation? I think that's great that, um, that the colleges do, but does BCC do a presentation or do they have a visitation? A presentation for? The students going to BCC. Um, um, they have not done what happened in, in, you know, with Fitchburg and Bridgewater, right? Uh, those schools that I saw. But not a school visit. Yeah. We haven't done a BCC school visit. I believe we have, we have connections with BCC. In years past, they've done, yeah. I, I'm going to have to look into that, Dr. They Bob. come in and have, so they come into our college fairs, and they come yes. in and do, yes. they come on site and do information sessions yeah. with kids. Yes. Um, but we haven't done a, a campus visit. Right. But that doesn't mean we, we couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. The interest level at our school for UMass Dartmouth is really high. I would right. say that uh, I think our numbers just came in 57 to 60% of our students go off 
who um, two year or four year colleges, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of them are going off to UMass and BCC. Yep. So BCC is a great alternative, it is a great especially money wise. It's it's much. So one thing I would say is a lot of what our students are doing economically is doing their first years at BCC and then transferring off yep. to a UMass or a Bridgewater State because economically it makes perfect sense. Yep. So that you're seeing students do that in, in most in many cases. I I'm sure he stole half of your show for the night. Oh, he did. I don't know how I'm going to cover that. <laughs> I don't know how I can compare. Oh, oh. <laughs> Money's on you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just stick with the script. So, as you guys know, BPA, the students from BPA went to nationals. There was 30 students total, and multiple students placed within the top 10 rank, and two students got second place. And the trip was awesome. Uh, we'd like to thank the school for covering most of the expense. It was a, it was a big, it was a, it was a heavy plane ticket, but the school came through. You guys helped us um, afford that trip, and also thank you for that allowance for food. We was able to have a food allowance thanks to the school as well. Um, Skills USA is national, so students went to the state leadership conference for Skills, and seven students made it to Atlanta, Georgia, where they will be having their um, national leadership conference. And it's not just the USA. Um, students from the USA who are part of Skills, the students from China, students from Germany. So um, it's a it's a pretty uh, cool cool um, rank of students. And now let's talk about the seniors. So senior sign up is in 12 more days. Um, it's crazy on how the school year just passes by so fast. But man, it's been a memorable time here. Um, there's definitely going to be a, a lot of um, yearbook signing on those days. The seniors are going to get some roses from their family members and friends. So it's going to be a crazy week. Um, and then after prom, so. There were some rumors saying that after prom was canceled. Um, that's not true because we got enough volunteers, so we'll be having after prom. And if you don't know what after prom is, it is a safe way for students, for seniors to hang out after prom, a safe way. Because many students, unfortunately, may drink and drive, may go to parties and whatnot. But the school, we provide a space where students can have fun and win some cars, win some iPads. It's a cool time. Um, senior Splash. So this is an activity that seniors are doing, right? So are you guys familiar with what Senior Assassin is? So Senior Assassin is not a cool name, so we change it to Senior Splash. And basically, students go each other and they get each other with squirt guns. So this is not a school-affiliated event. All right, um, Mr. Williams wasn't up to it, Mr. Superintendent Watson, they have no <laughs> set in it, so there's no, so there's no controversy, but um, it's been a fun time. Um, I think something so cool is we have an Instagram page for this, right? And like when students get out, right, there's no whining, there's no complaining, there's so many smiles. It's really bringing us all together. Friends are going out trying to get each other, and it's really a cool event. Um, and then recently, the underclassmen have been fundraising crazy. So the juniors had a fundraiser at Tropical Smoothie recently, and the sophomores fundraised at Texas Roadhouse. And it was crazy because I went to Texas Roadhouse that day, and I didn't know that they were fundraising. So my advice to y'all, advertise more, all right? <laughs> need some more advertisement. But it's cool that students are already considering their junior banquet and their prom. And speaking of junior banquet, the juniors are having their junior banquet this Friday. So it's cool that they have a half day to get ready, and then they can go to Weiss of Westport. Uh, recently, the Voltec Theater Company had a production of 9 to 5. Um, I wasn't able to attend, but I heard that it was an awesome production, and it was very meticulously um, curated. So shout out to the Voltec Theater Company. And also, there were some seniors a part of that cast, too. And I feel like as a school year ends, right, you're a senior, right? These clubs, these um, things that you do, right, outside of the classroom, it becomes more, more it becomes more, um, what's the word? More, not enjoyable, it becomes more like, heavy, like it weighs more on you because you're like, man, like this is my last time doing this. I was at BPA Nationals and I'm like, wow, this is my last time. This is my last time doing it, honestly, competing at that national level. So I was like, wow, like I wanna take it all in. So I'm pretty sure there are a lot of students in that moment. Um, Principal Appreciation Day. So on the 1st of May, we had uh, Principal Appreciation Day and in celebration of our principals, we held a breakfast for them in the Lighthouse Cafe. And this was a total surprise. We had their assistants coordinate and put in something in the calendar so they wouldn't know. And it, it was awesome. It was cool to have some students and principals communion. And um, it was a great way to just appreciate our principals because Mr. Karen, Mr. Pimento, Mr. Williams, Superintendent Watson, they do so much for our school. So much that is seen, unseen, and it was really cool to just have a day, have, so, have a, an hour, just um, really show them that we love them. And also, we are in the middle of Teacher Appreciation Week. And that's a whole other category of teachers who stay up late nights grading, right? Think about their students. 
I mean, I feel like our teachers and principals don't get appreciated enough because they do so much. And uh, it goes past like the work day. I was having a conversation with Mr. Karen and I was like, man, like how do you, how are you able to turn work off when you go home? And he's like, sometimes it's hard because you're always thinking about the students, you're always thinking about your staff. So I, I definitely want to give them a shout out for all the work they do, honestly, it's, it's crazy. Um, and exciting news, so this week, well next week, we'll be voting on the next student rep who will fill my position. So come June, you guys will have a new student representative. Great news, come on, it's awesome seeing people grow. And it's, listen, no, 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 it's cool because like students are not only able to grow in this school. Like you guys just switch positions, right? Mrs. Betancourt, you became the chair, vice chair. Like this school has so many opportunities for people to grow in many areas. Doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter who you are. Um, also, the den, like he said, is having a seal. Make sure you get it. I think it's like 30% off, and there's some items that are on 50, so you don't want to miss this deal. I got this from the den. It's nice. Um, it doesn't shrink in the wash. All right, I made that mistake because I got a medium. I should have got a small. <laughs> a small. All right, so it don't, it don't shrink in the wash. This is professional right there. Come on. And then I would like to announce that this coming up fall, I will be going to Liberty University to study information. <laughs> So far from home, but I'm excited to see what um, I'm excited to see this my next path, what God's gonna do, and I'm really excited. All right, and that's all I have for you guys today. Any questions? Where is Liberty? It's in Virginia, Lynchburg. Where in Lynchburg, Virginia? Oh, wow, that is a ways, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yes, do you know Edmund Gomes? Yes, I do. I do know Mr. Gomes. He's been there forever, so he's from here, and he's a great, great guy. Mm -hmm. So Come up. Look, come back. Yes. Take care. All right. Tell him you met Carol too. Yeah, through you. Uh, back when Elijah came on, his teacher, Mr. Glover, told me he says, "This young man is going to surpass anybody you have ever had on this committee," and he hasn't uh, betrayed us. I mean, he has exceeded everything I have expected of him. He's done outstanding work for the school. He commends everybody else here, but he's done an outstanding job in putting the students together for various functions, and I want to wish him the very best of luck. I gave him, I, I, there's a few of us here that uh, know Jake Oliveira, who was a school committee member from, was it, he's had for the, he was a student representative, he's now a state senator, and I gave him the article that was in the MASC, and I told him that's going to be him in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. thank you, sir. Congratulations. It's a luck in your future. Yeah, appreciate it. You, uh, thank you. Just a disclaimer I will be here in June with the next uh, student representative, but thank you so much for your words. It means a lot. And it's been really a privilege to be on this board, honestly. Thank you. Thank it's a privilege you. to have you here with us. I'm honored to have you sitting next to me. <laughs> Best seat in the house. <laughs> um, we're going to move on to new business, and I just want to quickly just introduce Carol Pimentel. Um, she's our new representative from New Bedford, so we are a full school committee for uh, beginning time, uh, beginning. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to say welcome, and we're glad you're here. Um, I'd just like to say that. <clears throat> I'm very happy to be here, and thank you all. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. <clears throat> and my, my main goal is to support the students, the staff, the teachers, and the community. So let's work together and make it work. All right, next item on our agenda is the first reading for adoption of the 2023-24 Student Handbook. Um, everyone should have received a copy. The motion we accept. Um, any discussion? Questions? Uh, Superintendent's evaluation. Thank you, Ms. Bencourt. Um, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be reaching out to you all individually as we prepare my evaluation binder. Um, I'll certainly make sure it's delivered to you, but request the opportunity to walk you through the documents that we've put together. I'm really proud of the work that we've done uh, this year. 
uh, some of which is visible and others are invisible, but we'll be providing all the documentation and the work that we've done around the goals we established as a team uh, in September. Uh, so you should expect that within a week and a half or so, um, so that you'll have ample time to review those documents and uh, get the evaluation results to Mrs. Fredette, and she'll work with Ms. Benton Court, Mr. Olvera, to provide uh, the evaluation by, uh, report for you to vote on in our June session. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Next up, we need a vote to transfer um, to the transportation reimbursement fund based on time and effort of unexpenditure expenditures not to exceed Chapter 71 reimbursement amount. Stuart, do you want to? Pretty much just said. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if there was anything else you needed. Okay. Um, can we have a vote for that transfer? We do the transfer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, all right, we have a report on personnel appointments, retirements, or resignations. See it placed on file. All in favor? No. And um, just communications. Well, tonight, if you want to go over those, or do you sure, want to yep. Uh, senior awards night is next Wednesday, uh, six o'clock p.m. in the auditorium. A reminder on our graduation exercises: the first Friday in June, on June third. June third should be second. Correct. Yes. Second. Correct. June second is the Friday. Yep. Uh, we, there's the correspondence Mr. Williams addressed earlier from Skills USA that has been included in your packets for review as well as a correspondence from uh, Catherine Cooper, the Executive Director of the SMEC Collaborative. Uh, Mr. McCormick, if anybody has any questions on, on the SMEC, I need the representative from this group that goes there. And Catherine has given us a, a kind of a note sheet, and I've attended probably about 95% of the meetings this year. And basically what it is is that they were able to, you know, uh, put out a bid for a North Style Learning Center had a place up near the industrial park area, which is, wasn't conducive to them anymore. It ended up basically, uh, spent for the $1,495,000 RFP response that included everything they had. They have turned, they were unable to service many students this year because they didn't have the space or the room. And but I think this is a very positive thing. All the members on the SMEC board reaching from basically over Rochester, all the way down. We, we all felt it was a unanimous decision for it to go, but I'm just reporting back to you that this is something that had been thought out. They thought they had a few places, they all fell through, but this is something that's very positive for our kids because now they are able to service more kids because of the space was limited. And I think, um, especially, you, know, you would know more than I, I sit do. sit on the steering committee, and we're so thankful that that got voted through because you did not have yeah. the space. So this is huge, and, and, and it's a lot of money, but again, they will give you money to have, and they'll be able to help more kids from our school as well as other school. So it's a good thing. Um, any other committee discussions? Um, any other business that may have not come before this meeting? We no executive session tonight, so we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Mrs. Burnett, roll call. Yes. Miss um, <clears throat> Pimentel. Yes. Mr. Shea. Yes. Dr. Marlin. Yes. Mr. Jurgen. Yes. Mr. Toomey. Yes. Ms. Oliveira. Yes. Yes.